the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coats present Marion and Tim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with I'm Just Wild About Harry. <laughs> pleasant pastoral picture of suburban life. The squire of 79 Wistful Vista standing on the front lawn, garden hose in hand, gracefully sprinkling the grass and exchanging greetings with passing neighbors. But you know and we know that things can't stay as peaceful as this with Fibber McGee and Molly. decent of me to give you little crocuses and dandelions to drink on the house, ain't it? <laughs> Why don't some of you run around and see what the boys in the backyard will have? <laughs> oh, I had a cow pony and his name was Danny with the F bar and branded right on his hip bone. <laughs> oh, oh, hi, Nick. Oh, hello there, Fisher. I'm glad to see you watering the horticulture because you know why? No, why? On account of what the old poetry is saying. You know, thirsty days has September, and the grass is also thirsty in May. Because if you don't keep the grass looking green, then what have you got in your yard? Hey, hey. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Fizzard, if I don't look out. <laughs> so long, Nick. <laughs> what have you got in your yard? Hey, hey. As a poet, the populace reminds me of Tennyson. Except that Tennyson's dead all over. <laughs> I'll take it easy there now, you little geraniums. I'll take care of you in a minute. There's plenty more water. Hi, Mr. McGee. What you doing, huh? Oh, hello there, little girl. Well, what does it look like I'm doing? Think on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why Jack? Well, because you're such a faker. When I see you doing something, I always wonder what you're really up to, I bet you. <laughs> you do, eh? <laughs> Well, this is really on the up and up, sis. If I don't do this, the grass will get scorched, and if the grass gets scorched, my wife will be burned up, too. <laughs> you catch on to it, sis? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, Mr. McGee, mm -hmm. why does sprinkling the grass make it stay green? <laughs> why does it? The water isn't green. <laughs> well, I'll explain it to you. Okay. Well, sir? I just love to know, I bet you. <laughs> Good. Now, here's what I... I bet this is going to be awful interesting. Yeah, it is. You see, sis, a grass See, is... I can hardly wait to hear it. Dad, Rabbit, how can I tell you if you keep interrupting me? You can't. Well, all right, then. See that you... I, I won't interrupt anymore, I bet you. Well, that's fine. As I was going because to say... Because I really want to know all about it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Well, sir... Is this the beginning? Yes, this is the beginning. The seventh beginning, to be exact. Now, look, sis. The reason grass stays nice and green when you sprinkle it is on account of because for the following reasons. A, grass is a very smart vegetable. Oh. 
B. It is also an ambitious vegetable. C. Yes. Huh? Sure, I see. <laughs> well, being ambitious, all the little blades of grass want to grow up to be a great big vegetable, like a tree. Um... So laying there on the lawn all day long, looking up at the trees and wishing they were trees, too, they turn green with envy. <laughs> see how it works out? <laughs> Personally, I think it's a lot of malarkey. What you mean? Well, gee, actually, grass contains a chemical substance known to science as chlorophyll. Huh? Then the actinic rays of the sun by the process known as photosynthesis develops the chlorophyll to the point where it becomes visually evident as a distinct green coloration. Uh -huh, sure. So you can take that green with envy stuff and spread it on the grass. <laughs> With summer just around the corner, you're going to be using your car more than usual. Now, every time you put your foot on that old accelerator and start down the street, how'd you like to hear everybody saying, well, the Smiths certainly keep their car looking like a million dollars. Now, is that difficult? No, it isn't. Not as long as you have a can of that sensational new wax polish, Johnson's Car New. Let me tell you briefly the story of Car New. First, it does two jobs at once. It cleans and wax polishes at the same time in one easy operation. And second, it actually takes less than half the time cleaning and wax polishing used to take. Many car owners have told us enthusiastically that they did the job in one hour. If your car is very dirty, it may take you a little more, but you'll still say Car New is a miracle worker. And third, it's very inexpensive. So you see, the old bugaboo's hard work and high cost are gone. Thousands of the country's leading service stations use Car New for polishing customers' cars. Then why wait? Get your can of Johnson's Car New tomorrow from your regular wax dealer or your auto supply store or filling station. Grassy, grassy, grassy. <laughs> Uncle Fibber will see that you all get some water. Ah, oh, there, McGee. Good day. Uh, sprinkling the lawn? Who, me? <laughs> Why, no, Gildersleeve, I ain't. <laughs> the curbstone was on fire, and I'm putting it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, McGee. <laughs> You're about as subtle as a bass drum. Okay, I'm a bass drum. Now beat it. All right, then. Turn that hose the other way and let me pass. <laughs> See if you can run under it without getting wet, Gildy. I won't do it, McGee. I didn't come here to play games. I've had a hard day at the office, and I'm tired. Well, it'll do you good to relax. Come on, I'll give you till I count three to get past me. One, two... No, cut it out, McGee. Stop it! <laughs> Hurry up, Gildy, please. On him away there. Look at <laughs> Hey, cut that out. It's cold. Stop it. You're getting me all wet, McGee. I always said you were a big sponge, Gildy, <laughs> Now, let's see how much you can soak up. <laughs> Why, George, this is the last straw, McGee. I'm coming after you. Oh, yeah? You want this hose right in your foot? <laughs> hey, hey, what are you going to do with that knife? I'm going to cut this hose into bits. That's what I'm going to do. Now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Well, you're not me, thank goodness. One side there, McGee. Hey, Gildersleeve, yeah, don't I'll cut that hose. fix this. Yeah. I guess that'll fix you, McGee. <laughs> You'll never sprinkle anybody with that hose again. I won't, eh? <laughs> well, neither will you. What's that? It's your hose. I borrowed it this afternoon. <laughs> hey, McGee! Get away from me now. Cut it out, Gilda. Stop! Leave uh, it alone, Gilda. Get that guy. Hey, Wait a minute, McGee! Open the door! Wait. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, Molly. Don't I... say a word, McGee. 
I saw the whole thing through the window. Aren't you ashamed, turning the hose on Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Boy, was that fun. Old Gilly was wetter than a mad hen. <laughs> well, now, you have no business drenching him, McGee. What if he should catch cold? Oh, don't worry, he won't. Even a germ wouldn't associate with that guy. Well, now, just the same, don't antagonize him too much. Why, he could tear you apart like a, uh, like an artichoke. <laughs> Who, that guy? <laughs> Go on, I could slap that mug down with a wet noodle. <laughs> I say, if I ever oh, stop... Say, Flipper, well, what do you want, Wilcox? Though, as the guy says when he sat on the bee, I have a steep-seated suspicion. Well, you seem a little perturbed, Mr. Wilcox. Well, look, I just talked to Gildersleeve, and he said he was going to pin Fibber's ears back. Oh, he said that, did he? Why, that big dirigible. A few more cracks like that, and I'll knock him flat on a policeman's feet. Now, take it easy, dearie. <laughs> Remember now, McGee, you're not the man you used to be, if you ever were. <laughs> yes, and don't forget, Gildersleeve was once an intercollegiate boxing champion. Oh, pooey on him. If he thinks... What'd you say? <laughs> I said he used to be intercollegiate boxing champion. Oh. But don't worry about it. Why, if anything happens, I can have an ambulance over here in six minutes. Oh, oh, heavenly days, an ambulance. Am, 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 ambulance? <laughs> You mean one of them cars that runs along in front of a cheap lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. The driver is a great friend of mine. I sold him some of that sensational new wax polish Johnson's car new for his ambulance. And he thinks it's marvelous. Says it's as wonderful for cars as glow coat is for floors and linoleum. And it is. Well, now, isn't it nice, dearie, that you'll be hauled away to the accident ward by a good Johnson customer? Oh. <laughs> Boy, is he a good Johnson customer. Why, when he found out, Fibber, that Johnson's car knew was a double-action product that cleans and polishes in one operation, he was amazed and delighted. You simply apply it, let it dry, and wipe it off. And there's your ambulance looking like new. My ambulance? Now, look, Wilcox, I don't want it. So he said to me, pal, he said, he always calls me pal now. <laughs> pal, he said, just for introducing me to Johnson's car new, my ambulance is at the service of you and your friends anytime. So just call me if anything happens, Fibber. So long, Molly. <laughs> So, Mr. Gildersleeve was a boxing champion. Oh, well. Well, as one of Dietrich's stockings said to the other, you certainly got yourself out on a beautiful limb this time, dearie. <laughs> yeah, but as the fly says, when he fell into the preserves, I've been in much worse jams than this. Oh, you have, have you? Yeah. Well, come and look out this window. Okay. Huh? Where? Look out there. Uh-oh. Ooh, there's Gildersleeve with a punching bag. Oh, well... Nothing wrong with a guy getting a little exercise, I guess, is there? Yeah. I'm afraid you can't laugh this off, dearie. Hmm? He's getting ready for you, and you know it. Oh, dear. Just look at the muscles on him. Oh, don't. Oh, did you see that, McGee? He huh? knocked the bag clear over the fence. Yeah. I saw it. Just a, just a lucky punch, though. <laughs> You know, Molly, I've been thinking, we ought to get out of town for a few days. <laughs> Take a little drive somewhere. And do us both good. No, no, we don't, McGee. You're not going anywhere till you see this thing through. Oh. You've made your bed, now don't crawl under it. <laughs> Who's crawling? I ain't afraid of that well, guy. Well, now, there's only one way we might avoid any trouble. Huh? How? Oh. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, here, here, calm yourself. You're like a boy with a soda grasping at straws. Now, look, go over to Mr. Gildersleeve and apologize. No. Tell him you're sorry you turned the hose on him. I won't. Well, all right. I'll do it. Fine. Now, you run along, dearie. Here, here, here. What are you doing taking that baseball bat along? Well, if he wants to be friendly, you'll see us out in the backyard playing ball. Otherwise, I'll see you later. Ah, me. If I know Mr. Gildersleeve, McGee will never get to first base, even with that bat. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? And Mr. Miller. Oh, oh, no, Mr. McGee. No, Mrs. Duffington. He's gone next door to see Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, really? Well, I'd better go over there and see them both at once. What about, Mrs. Duffington? Well, the Parent Teachers Association is devoting its next meeting to physical culture and the benefits it will give to younger children. Oh, I see. Yes, and we wanted Mr. Gildersleeve and Mr. McGee to appear on the platform. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm afraid McGee isn't exactly the... You see, Mr. Gildersleeve is such a splendid example of a man who keeps fit. 
bulging muscles, good color, intensely active, and missing he is, uh, <laughs> well, he would exemplify the other side of the picture. <laughs> yeah. I see. Uh, you know, Mr. Gildersleeve is the strongest man in which position. Why, he can actually tie a knot in an iron horseshoe. Huh. Well, what of it? McGee isn't so bad either. Why, I've seen him tear a telephone uh, number in two with his bare hands. <laughs> well, I'll tell him what you wanted, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, thank you. Tell him that he and Mr. Gildersleeve will stand side by side on the stage with signs on their chest. Mr. Gildersleeve will read, Do you want to look like this? And what will McGee's sign say? Oh, this. But <laughs> oh, well, now, don't forget to tell him, my dear. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor McGee. I'm afraid he doesn't know what he's up against. Still, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. On the other hand, the smaller they are, the quicker they fall. Oh, the moon shines. Oh, hi, Molly. McGee, what happened? Tell me quick. What happened about what? For goodness sakes, about your fight with Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, oh, oh, that. Well, he refused to accept my apology, so we agreed to fight it out man to man. But where? When? How? My goodness, McGee, don't you realize that... Hmm, maybe that's him now. You better clear a space in the other room, Molly. I'll do no such a thing. If there's any fighting in here, you'll do it outside. <laughs> Come in. Now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. Remember, we agreed to... Oh, oh, hi, old-timer. Hello, Johnny. Hello, daughter. You're going to have a fight with old Gildersleeve, Johnny. Need a trainer? <laughs> no, I don't. What he needs is a train. One that leaves town as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter. In fact, that's very good. But it still ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> the way I hear it, one fellow says, the other fellow says, I see where they're going to put out moving pictures in nickel slot machines. That so, says the other fellow. Wonder how it'll seem to come in at the beginning of a picture. <laughs> sure you don't want a trainer, Johnny? No, I don't. I don't need a trainer. I'll slug that guy till he tinkles like a pay telephone. You pretty handy when you're Duke, Johnny? Am I? Why, shucks, old-timer. I've always been a scrapper. Why, even in kindergarten, I could bowl over the toughest guy in the room with one punch. Punch Bowl McGee, I was known as. <laughs> oh, my. Punch Bowl McGee, pronounced by press and public, the pugilistic pixie of the pedigreed paperweight pub, pummeling pudgy palookas, pulverizing proboscises and paralyzing plug uglies, Pound and pour preliminary pork and beaners to a pulp with a peppy tip of a pop. Positively a peach of a punk that plunks the punks on their piazzas. The ping-pong pop of the pineapple punch. A peculiar poke that petrifies the pit of the paunch of the pillow pushers who pop to the platform too Popeye to protest. Pantsing and posing and full of ambition. But say something, boys, I'm out of condition. <laughs> i 
Fight Mr. Gildersleeve, you better get busy. Hadn't you better be doing something about it? What you mean? Such as what? Well, do a little road work. Shadow box. Hmm? Uh, uh, soak your feet in salt water. <laughs> Hide yourself up a bit. Maybe I'd better run out and cut you a short length of clothesline. Clothesline? What'll I do with that? Uh, skip it. <laughs> I don't know why I should worry about it if you're going to stand there. Come in. Ah, good afternoon, my dear. And hello to you, Moose Jaw. Oh, hi, Boomer. What are you up to, besides no good? Well, I hear that you are about to engage in a fracas with Humpty Dumpty next door, short case. Well, what's that got to do with you, Horatio? Such belligerency. What makes you so bellicose, bellicose? <laughs> None of your business. Speak your little piece and get out. Gladly. I didn't come here to bandy words, bandy legs. <laughs> Thought you'd be interested in a helping of accident insurance. I wouldn't be interested, Boomer. Any company that would have you as a salesman would have a crook for its president. Sir, I won't have you talk that way about my dear father. Now, <laughs> <laughs> just allow me to show you one of our policies, bug eye. Well, make it snappy, Boomer. I haven't got all day. Ah, in a hurry to get your ears thickened, are you? Well, let me see. Insurance policy, insurance policy, insurance policy. Had it here a minute ago. Here's a two dollar parking ticket on a horse that parked too long at the post. <laughs> Here's a small musical saw. Very handy for cutting off hillbilly programs. <laughs> Floor plan for the first national bank. Never could find the men's washroom in there. <laughs> On ticket for a 16-tube radio, which I discovered was portable, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, here's a joke about the Grand Canyon. Ah, oh, there's a beautiful crack. <laughs> and a guest towel marked, please return to Sing Sing. Who, me or the town? <laughs> here's an old cigar butt. My goodness, have I stooped that low? <laughs> What's this? Why, it's so worn out, I can, I can hardly read. Oh, yes. <laughs> a check for short beer. <laughs> well, well, fancy that. No insurance policy. Well, it's just as well for you, Mr. Boomer. I don't think Mr. McGee is a very good insurance risk right now. I had that in mind, blonde, buxom, and beautiful. Oh, my. <laughs> when Brother Gildersleeve gets through knocking the frosting off your little cupcake here, I was going to split the payoff with you 50-50. <laughs> For one swift premium, we'd have collected on that ham advertisement. <laughs> Why, that big crook... Now, worked... now, never mind that, McGee. Well, Tell me more about this fight with Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, we just agreed to lock ourselves into a room, take off our coats, and go to it. What? But, McGee, don't you realize that he's quite oh, as big as you? Now, look here, oh, McGee. Now, now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. Wait a minute. We agreed to let it go. Well, I'm not talking about that, McGee. I just happen to remember that you ruined my new garden hose. I never done no such a thing, Gildersleeve. You cut it to pieces yourself. Well, how did I know it was mine? How did you know it was yours? Gildersleeve, if you ain't the dumbest, egg-headedest... Hose cutting this. Hose cutting this. Mrs. McGee, I'll thank you not to give him any suggestions. Now, you quit picking on my wife, Gildersleeve. I'm not picking on your wife, you little biological, believe it or not. Oh. <laughs> if you had the IQ of a Javanese clam digger... Now, here, here. <laughs> what does IQ mean? Intelligent quotient. Oh. So, I am a quotient, am I? <laughs> Why, you great people... Oh, here, boys, boys, please. I now... took all I'm going to took off of this bazooka boy's quote, O'Malley. The time has come for action. You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> 
Now, that's the way you feel about it. Take off your coat. Okay. Wait a minute, Gildersleeve. You forget. There's a lady present. Oh, don't mind me, boys. I'm no lady. You are, too. She is now. I am, too. <laughs> oh, trying to put me in the middle again, are you, Gildersleeve? Okay, that does it. Come on in the other room and we'll settle this thing once and for all. All right, McGee. You're asking for it. Asking for it. I'm demanding it. Come on. Okay. Oh, oh, heavenly days. It's come at last. I never thought they'd actually get beyond the U R 2 I M up stage. I wonder if I ought to call for help. Oh. Oh. Would you listen to that? Remember, McGee, this is to a finish. I'll say it to a finish. Get that chair out of the way. Okay. Move that table up this way. Oh, All right, McGee. Let's go. I'm ready. And I don't mind telling you, I'm going to give you such a pushing around oh, you. Oh, oh, I think this has gone far enough. I won't have them wrecking my house. I won't. Now, look here, you two. You... Well, what on earth? It's too late to interfere now, Molly. Yes. We're all set to go, Mrs. McGee. Ready, McGee? Ready, Gildersleeve. There's the checkers. Which do you want, red or black? (laughs) River and Molly will be back in just a moment. When your friends come in your front door, what's the first thing they see? What gives them their first impression of your home and of you as a housekeeper? It's usually your floors. Now, if those floors have a mellow, gleaming, waxed beauty, then you have something to be proud of. If they're dull and shabby, then you needn't expect many compliments, and you'd better call your dealer and put in an emergency order for genuine Johnson's Wax. One application of Johnson's Wax will make a tremendous difference, both in the appearance of the floors and in protection against wear. Johnson's Wax seals up the pores, guarding the finish against scuffing feet and dirt. A Johnson Wax floor is more beautiful with every application of wax. It's easy to clean and never needs scrubbing again. For over 50 years, Johnson's Wax has been giving protection and beauty to floors, furniture, and woodwork everywhere. It's sold in practically every country in the world. Order some yourself tomorrow. You'll find more than 100 uses for this labor-saving product listed on the package. not. I just moved. You did not. I just moved this man over to here. What? Why, you great big bull fiddle, you never just... Look here, McGee. Oh, dear, oh, dear. This is where I came in. I'm going to bed, boys. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.